Okay, colleagues, uh, let me welcome members to the 11th meeting in 2015 in the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointment Committee. And, of course, remind everybody to switch off their mobile phones as they may affect the, mobile, the broadcasting system. Uh, agenda item one uh, is uh, for members to agree to take agenda item three in private. Uh, this item is for the committee to consider its approach to the scrutiny of the Scotland Bill. Do members agree to take this item in private? Agreed. We're agreed. Thank you very much. Uh, agenda item two. Uh, the next item is for members to consider correspondence received from the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body and the Scottish Government in response uh, to the committee's inquiry into lobbying. Uh, the cover note that's been provided highlights the extent to which the Government has based its consultation on the committee's model for a lobbying register. It also highlights where the government has chosen to go in a different direction uh, from the committee. Um, I invite you to make uh, whatever comments you wish to make at this stage, colleagues. Does anyone wish to uh, say anything in particular at this stage? I can if you're not going to. Patricia. I don't have made any idea why the government has chosen to deviate from our proposals. And there didn't seem to be much in the way of explanation of the, the rationale for that. I, I, I can only say that I would suspect um, that the government lawyers may have had some hand in this and have taken a more legalistic view, whereas we sought to take a more practical view. I, say, I certainly think we might want to make comments and steer the government back closer to our original proposals. That would be the position I would, mm -hmm. speaking as an individual rather than as your convener at this stage, uh, would suggest we do. Gil. Except for this, um, the, the, the government's talking about having <coughs> individuals registered. And I wondered if there was a kind of, that, that might be actually possible if there was a kind of, um, if it was an, uh, one person who happened to be a consultant everybody else would be registered un under a company, if you follow what I mean. So that it might not be, if you think it out, it might not be just as bad and resource-driven as, you know, at, at the first look. I think our proposals were focused around perhaps two things. Um, the first thing, which is missing from what the government have said at the moment, they don't have a de minimis, in other words, a level of lobbying below which it's not necessary to yeah. register. And I think... You know, we perhaps need to have a little think about and question them why they've chosen not to follow follow us on that. Um, and and then, secondly, um, if you take that approach, it's really any organisation, be it of one person or a million people, yeah. who exceed <coughs> the de minimis that then has to register. And I I haven't thought through the full implications of this, but I think there is a danger. Um, that y y you end up with such a diffuse lobbying through large numbers of people from a single organisation that you can lose the focus and the aggregation that would come from all that organisation's lobbying by various people within it being consolidated in one place in the register. And I suspect it might make it more difficult to actually see what's going on. But, but I think you know, there's probably further debate. Patricia? I suppose I had two concerns about that. One was that the whole tenor of our report, and our, based on the information we were given and the evidence we took, was that it was about the activity and not yep. the person. Yep. So it bothers me slightly that we would, or that any future legislation would deviate from that. But also, it seems to me, and I think this is where the corporate body are absolutely right, that there would be a huge resource implication. I mean, if it's an organisation that consists of one person, then that's one person or one organisation that has to be registered. But if it was an organisation, and this isn't beyond the realms of possibility, that employed 100 people, 75 of whom may at some point have some involvement in lobbying, then all 75 of them would have to register. But the Parliament would also have to make sure those registers were appropriate, correct, up to date and all the rest. Um, so I think that would all, almost make a sort of industry within the Parliament which you know, would be quite resource intensive. And would, I think, 
you're right to say, possibly lead to a dilution of the focus on the fact that it's actually supposed to be about the activity and not the individual. I, th I, think, I think, too, the other thing that adds weight to that is they are not allowing a grace period. Yes. In other words, you may, you may not lobby until, until. you've registered. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it would be of necessity mm -hmm. you'd have to put everybody forward. Yeah. Whereas we've said, when it becomes apparent you've lobbied, mm -hmm. you've 30 days in which to, to register. Cameron. Thank you. I just wanted to add to Patricia's point, because it also struck me, these big organisations, what happens if they change personnel all mm -hmm. the time, and then you're stuck, and you've got to re-register and register? And that's sort of subsidiary to Patricia's point. I was very concerned about that. I didn't think that's the right way to go about it at all. For these big organisations, you've got 60 or 70 people in them. Mm -hmm. And we'd never know who they were, and the clerks would spend the whole time registering and de de registering people. Margaret. Yeah, and the other point on um, having to register in advance of the meeting, mm, which, yeah. you know, you don't always know that when you're going to meet someone that they are actually going to lobby you. I mean, in some circumstances you will, but it's just that practicality of that. And on the consultation, I did notice a glaring error All right. in the what happens next, you know, um, should be summer, it says summer 2014. That, that oh. <laughs> yeah. anyway, so, just thought I'd point that out. The Higgs boson has a backward reference in time, if you've read the <laughs> Copenhagen interpretation of the basic theory, uh, but uh, yeah, so just mostly you can't go backwards. So we have a chance to speak to the government about this, about their proposals. Yeah. Uh, David. Yeah. Thank you, convener. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've been listening to everything that's being, being said, and uh, <coughs> I share a lot of the, the concerns. But obviously we will have a chance to, you know, drill down into this and, and get the reasoning behind why the government feel that these, these things are, are necessary. Um, but it might be useful... In the meantime, I think, as Margaret was just suggesting, if you had a word with the, uh, with the government um, and just to say, look, you know, we've got these concerns. Uh, are you really sure this is where you want to go? We'll be wanting to tease them out in some detail. So just think about it before you come out with your final, final proposals. Well, the, the, the government has launched a formal consultation. So there's a range of options. First of all, for the committee to respond to the consultation, although I think that puts us in a slightly odd position because we would be likely to be the committee that will then consider it. So I suspect in formal terms that might not be the way we'd wish to proceed. We may as individuals or as members of political parties may find ourselves party to responses to the consultation. Um, if uh, anyone who's a member of the committee is a party to a response, it might be helpful to just make sure we are aware of that, uh, although responses will be in the public anyway, uh, unless uh, something unusual is going on. Uh, but I think, uh, I, I think certainly we should draw together the comments that have been made, and we appear to be broadly in the same place uh, from what I've been hearing, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll maybe get Ros to write a note send that to the minister, and I will go and see the minister. I think that sounds a, a way forward in the first instance. Um, I think it's very important, as the consultation is now underway, that we write to the minister. Uh, well, that's precisely my um, point. Because I, I, it is now a public document. Yep. It's a public exercise, and I think it's really important that we put our comments in writing. Um, well, I, I'm, just as a matter of process, and I'll come to Gil in a second, I'm suggesting that we do it outside it being a formal response to the consultation. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Right, not, okay. Not as I a just, response, but no, as no. a letter from the committee. I just want to be clear yeah, that yeah. we're of one mind on that. Gil? Yeah. Well, the point I was going to make, the point there, the, the government will benefit from what we're saying just now, it'll be in yep. the public record. I, I, I kind of smell lawyer speak here, so it might not be just as bad as we think. But if you remember that this committee did discuss who would actually pay for any registration, etc. Yeah. And we took a decision, and this, if, 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 it's, as, if it's so uh, resource-driven as it suggests in here, I'm not so sure that, that it is. But if it is, then you know we had considered that, that the cost shouldn't be borne by those who register, so that might need to be rethought out because the uh, resources uh, provided by the Parliament is a different thing from those who benefit from doing this work, so 
you know, I, I think we would need, or somebody would need to rethink this out. So I want to put that in the record so the government can yep. see that, that the way that we were thinking and how the model that we had prepared uh, and, and what the thought process was. Right, that, that's okay. Does anyone else uh, want to make any observations at this stage? And as I say, that in no way inhibits any individual uh, or the party of which anyone is a member from making their own arrangements and responding to consultation. Right, okay. Um, if that ends agenda item two, that uh, ends the public part of the meeting. And we now move into private session.